Now it's time to move on from the tranquility of the Everglades, and just an hour down the highway is a place that couldn't be more different. Miami, party city by the beach, where Spanish-speaking America and English-speaking America collide. When you think of Miami, you tend to think of palm trees, nightlife, neon. But recently, Miami has experienced a cultural renaissance and now finds itself to be a world leader in architecture and design and art. And every year they have a poetry festival called Oh Miami, and they've come up with some smashing ideas. They have put poems on the roofs of buildings so you can read them from an aeroplane as you fly in. They've had them on the back of buses. They've even thought of putting them on petrol pumps so you can have a little poem as you fill your car. Recently, they have come up with the most original idea. Not only can you go to the library and get a loan of a book of poems, you can go now and get the loan of a real life poet. Hello. Hello. I'd okay, like to I'll check out a poet, please. Okay. Um, just write your name here for me. Sure. Let's see, and your poet today is Michael Martin. And I'll go get him right now. Thank you. Can't wait. Hello, Michael. Hi, Billy, it's nice to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Yeah, so you got me. I got just a spot we can go and talk some poetry. Very good. Okay. This is the first time I've done anything like this before. It turns out Michael's from Nicaraguan stock, and in a funky neighborhood away from the glamour of the beach is Yambo's, a hidden gem of another Miami. I'm happy to bring you here. This is one of my favorite spots. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's an amazing looking place. Yeah, there's a whole lot going on here. Um, over there, we have a bust of of Ruben Dario, who's the uh, most important poet in Nicaragua. Really? That's right. Yeah. Can I get you guys a drink? I think we're going to get two tamarindos. Who goes tamarindos? Tamarindo? Yeah. Small and large. Um, let's make them large. We can handle a large one. That's right. <laughs> you checked me out. I'm going to read you a poem now. Oh, good. It's part of the job. The key lime. Curiously yellow hand grenade of flavor. Molotov cocktail for a revolution against the bland. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I really like that poem myself. I, I, I feel like it's about poetry in a way, you know? Sure. Every poem's a bit of a, a hand grenade. That's delicious. Yeah? You like it? I love it. I could give you one of mine. It's called I'd Rather Be a Sausage by Billy Connolly. I'd rather be a sausage. Oh, wait a minute, oh yeah. I'd rather be a sausage than a British man of war, or a caterpillar with a broken arm. Corduroy braces it all very well, and give no immediate cause for alarm. But the sausage is a mighty beast who serves only to please. In fact, he is the mightiest there is, content to lie in frying pans for hours at a stretch singing sizzle, 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 sizz. Bravo. What do you think? Yeah, that's pretty good, I gotta say. <laughs> when did you do that? About 10 years ago. Oh, yeah? I was on an airplane and I was kind of scared and I thought I'd occupy myself. That's the real deal, that's how it happens. <laughs> <laughs> They're like prayers, really, aren't yeah, they? I think so. That's how I feel about them. Yeah, yeah. prayers to yourself. Yeah. As a god. <laughs> well, if you've met any poets, then you know it's definitely. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's such a curious thing, poetry of itself, you know, to try and explain it to someone yeah. what poetry is. One of the great discoveries we had with O Miami was that when we first started, we were trying to bring poetry to the community, or at yeah. least that's what we thought we were doing. 
And what we very quickly discovered was that poetry was already in the community. Yeah. So we were like, oh, our job isn't really to bring poetry to the people, rather it's just to amplify the poetry that's already there. Well, Michael, I've never borrowed a poet before. It's been a lovely experience. It Thank was, you very it was much. Lovely to be here with you. Cheers. As I went to pay, I discovered Oh Miami had one last surprise up their sleeve. Dollar bills printed with poems are changing hands all over the city. What does it say? We will dance in the infinite circle. In the woods, we will weave it with glee. We will dance at the foot of the mountains and on all the shores of the sea. <laughs> what, you and me? <laughs> I'm sorry. So there you go, we're going to dance at the foot of the mountains. What a jolly day. When I dance naked, I sing to myself, there were three ships on Christmas Day and Christmas Day in the morning. On Christmas Day in the morning. That's the tune I dance to when I'm naked. That's a silly dance. And you must be out of shape to do it. If you're in shape, you look as if you're showing off. You're doing something else, some kind of look at me, look at my abs. But when you look at me, you look like a tortured question mark. It becomes funny. Miami is well known for its Latin American neighborhoods. And where I'm heading, you could be forgiven for thinking you'd just arrived in Cuba. Yes, sir, what can I get? Can I have a cornerito, please? Right away, sir. With sugar? With sugar. Yeah. I love Cuban coffee. It doesn't love me. Two a day is my extreme outside. It's a bit like that turkey stuff. You blow the top of your head off. Thank you very much. In the 50s and 60s, there was a great rush of immigrants from Cuba to here. The first lot were trying to get away from the dictator Batista, and the second lot were trying to get away from Castro. This place became so Latin, so Cuban, with cigars and music and dance, that the local people began to call it Little Havana. And this is 8th Street. It became Cali Ocho almost overnight. This is Maximo Gomez Park, named after a major general when the Cubans fought the Spaniards in 1860. But it's better known as Domino Park, where old Cuban guys gather in the morning to put the world to rights. That seems really lively. Yeah, yeah, they're, 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 they're characters. See, where I come from, Domino's is a quiet game. No, not in, not in Cuba. So how long does this go on during the day? All day. They're playing all day. Like, he hasn't lost. So he's been sitting down since he got here. So he'll stay there until he either needs to go to the bathroom or until he loses. And then they're playing partners. Like his partner is that gentleman over there. His partner is that gentleman over there. And believe me, if they're partners and he blocks the table, he's gonna be angry. <laughs> yeah. I always thought they had the special powers to see through the back of the domino. Oh, you think, right? But they no, always yeah. seem to know what the other guy has. You think? I thought they had X-ray vision. You know. <laughs> Please. Yeah, man, yeah. You want to sit down and play with them or no? No, they will cut my throat. <laughs> Billy is Eduardo, Eduardo Billy. The highest double is what plays first. So you have a double nine, so you go first and it goes clockwise like this. Oh, yeah. 
They're too fast for me, these old guys. Just when you think you've got the number one of them plonks in in front of you. Oh, no, it's too much for me. They seems to keep these old guys right on their toes. But they behave like young guys. I keep forgetting I'm an old guy myself. <laughs> 